morning. I am Rob Carrington. Thank you for being with me. Let the sun lift your head up in hope. I'm looking at you and I'm telling you that you are greatly loved. You are made awesomely. <laughs> you are of great worth and you can make it through this day. There is a way. You search for that way. You look for the, that way, the right way. And you'll find it to go through this day. And I want to tell you that you are greatly loved. And now I'm going to start. Uh, I want to always tell you that, okay? <laughs> and I want you to look at the creation around you and let it lift your, le your head in hope because you are of great value. You are of such a great value that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and my sins and rose from the dead that he might lead us through life victoriously with him in an abundant life. If you don't want to hear about God, I understand that. Please go to my first messages. And uh, I believe that will give you also an encouragement. But right now, we are going to follow the one who loves you so much that he died to pay the penalty for my sins and your sins on the cross and rose from the dead to give us life with him now and forever. And we're beginning in my messages of talking about the Gospel of John. John in the Bible was a disciple of Jesus and uh, he was with Jesus very intently during a three-year period of Jesus' life upon this earth, which was approximately 33 years before he was crucified, dead, buried, and on the third day rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, where he is now at the right-hand side of God the Father Almighty, reigning, and he will come back to, to reign in this world and to destroy evil and to love us and, and let him uh, be loved by us. And John, who wrote the, the gospel, uh, was a man moved by God. He wrote the breath of God, scripture, but he, his hand and his mind was used by God, moved by God to write the gospel of John. And you know, John didn't even say that he wrote it, but you know what he wanted to us to know that he was loved by Jesus. And the same love that Jesus had for John the disciple when John the disciple walked on this earth with Jesus is the same love that Jesus has for you and me. Because this is a memory verse that I want us all to have. And these are the words Jesus said. And he said them to Nicodemus, who he told, you must be born again. You can read it in the third chapter of John. Be reading the, the Gospel of John regularly. I've been going through it many times to understand it. And through the Bible many times I've been reading. Proverb, proverb every day, a psalm every day I work to read. I encourage you to do that also because it is the breath of God. It will breathe life into your life. So... This is John 3, 16, uh, actually John 3, 13 through 18. I have a memory verse. And there was spoken to Nicodemus, as I says, recorded in Jap John chapter 3. And uh, you can read how Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And it means born from above, born by God, meaning our soul needs, and when we're born as a baby, we're alive with a body and we have a soul. That person who we are is a soul. And that soul, who we are, needs to be born again, born of God. And that's by the Holy Spirit. That's by believing in the name of Jesus, who he is, the Son of God, and how he is a Savior. And John 3, 13 through 18 memory verse uh, and no man hath ascended up to heaven 
but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, even the Son of Man who came, even the Son of Man who came down from heaven, who is in heaven, brother. Let me start that scripture again. <laughs> in fact, I'll read it to make sure I got it right. Jesus said to Nicodemus, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And that's just showing that Jesus is, he's God. Verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That means, that's talking about Jesus being lifted up in the cross, crucified. Okay, that's what he's talking about here now. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, and you can put your name in there, for God so loved you. And that's why it says, God loves you just as much as he loved that disciple Jesus who walked on the earth with him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God we must believe in the name of Jesus in the name very name of Jesus tells us that he's God because Jesus means the Lord saves. He saves us from, from the penalty of sin, which is death, separation from God, which is hell. And that's what Jesus saves us from, because he loves us. So, back to about being loved, how you are loved. And the, the Apostle John, Disciple John of Jesus, he wanted to be known as the one whom Jesus loved. And he mentioned it many times in that Gospel of John. And here I, I think it's, this is the first time. It's within the, the chapter of John 13. And John 13 starts out like this. Now before the feast of the Passover. Now this <clears throat> is before, it's on the night before, I believe, that Jesus was crucified. Jesus was crucified crucified during the Jewish Passover. And Jesus was speaking to his disciples on the night before he was crucified. And he actually washed their feet to show them how much he loved them and how he would make them clean, their souls clean, because they believed in who he was, his name, Jesus the Lord saves, they would believe he is the Lord God who saves. So I begin now again with John 13, 1. <clears throat> now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. You imagine God washing your feet? Well, that's what happened then. God, God the Son, who was called the Son of God, washed the feet of his disciples because he loved them. He wanted to show them 
how to live to serve one another. That's one thing he, he definitely wanted to show them. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, who, who said to him? Peter said this to Jesus, who said to him, Lord, do not do do you do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, uh, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. And that was... Judas who betrayed him. He was not considered clean, uh, forgiven of his sins by, by Jesus because he did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God and betrayed him. Verse 12, when he had washed his, their feet and put on his outer garments and, and resumed his, his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. Quote, he who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me, end of quote. That's an Old Testament scripture written hundreds of years ago. It was foretold that a man would betray Jesus, and, and that man was Judas Iscariot. And that fulfilled what was foretold hundreds of years earlier by God in his word. Verse 19, I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you will believe that I am he that he was God, the Son of God. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I sent receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. That's the God who sent, the God the Father who sent his Son to earth. And that was Jesus, the Son of God. Verse 21, after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to, to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, and G John was referring about himself as he was the one whom Jesus loved. That's the disciple who was talking about here. Verse 23 again, one of his disciples, and that's John, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table, reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus to whom he was speaking. So that disciple, that's John, leaned back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread, whom morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. 
Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. And uh, my time's up, so I just want you to know, keep looking up. Let the sun lift your head in hope, and know that you are greatly loved. You are loved by God. And you ever doubt that, you think of the cross, and the arms of Jesus stretched out on that cross, and died in your place, in my place, for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's, let's pray. I thank you, Jesus, that you are the Son of God, and that you did die in a cross. You were crucified cruelly, wrongly. You were God, holy, sinless, on that cross, and you were a man, and you bore my sins upon that cross. You suffered the death the separation from God, the wrath of God that I deserve for my sins, you endured all of that for me so that I could be forgiven of my sins when I believe that you are the Son of God who did this for me. And I turn from my sins, God, and I turn to you, Jesus, to follow you as the risen Lord and Savior who did not remain dead, but you rose from the dead. I give you my life, Lord Jesus. Live in me, rule my life that I may follow you in my, life, in my life and live a life being loved by you fully, being guided by you fully. And I can say, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen and amen. That's true. Believe it. Jesus loves you. Amen. Thank you for being with me.